What's up, divas and divos? So you guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday, and it's your girl, April. So you guys, first of all, let me just tell you, um, I just did finish doing a synthetic wig tutorial video for tomorrow's video, and I'm not really sure how I feel about the wig. Like, seriously, I did show you guys a tutorial on how you can use eyebrow pomade or eyebrow gel or you can also probably use eyeliner gel because I do believe that they're actually the same thing um, just to um, basically transform your wig. So I did show you guys that, but I really don't know how I felt about the wig in general. The color that I chose was kind of ghostly. And yeah, it was it was kind of ghostly. The color was kind of ghostly. Um, the texture was amazing, okay? It was like a very pretty texture. And the length did look a lot longer on the actual model on the stock photo versus on me. And I'm I'm not tall. I'm 5'4", 5'3 and a half, 5'4". I'm not tall at all. Though I did go to a appointment with Nay and I was, you know, they did measure me and I was 5'5". Five, five. So who knows? I'm somewhere in between there. So I'm definitely not tall. But it just looked totally different on me. You know what I'm saying? So I wasn't like the best number one fan of it. Um, but I do like the texture. I did like the texture of it, for one, because that was a plus. It was like a light, yakky texture. And I did like the style somewhat. But I think that it would have been a lot better if it was a more natural color. You know how certain colors just don't go for everybody. And that color, I just don't think went for me at all. But, you know, you guys will see tomorrow. Let me know what you think. It's the Outre Monroe lace front. And it's, it's a beautiful unit. But I think I... Honestly, I think, like, for real, like, I chose the wrong color, like, seriously. Like, I don't even know what I was thinking. I was looking at the young lady on the website, and I was like, dang, she looked really cute in that. She looked pretty. It goes nice with her skin complexion. Girl, I took that wig off in a heartbeat, and I was really going to do another wig um, just to, so I could have, like, you know, a, a few built up in my collection. You know how you ever get in that mood where your whole feng shui, your whole vibe is gone out the door? It could be the wig that I just did. It could just be like, you know what? I'm tired. I don't even feel like doing this. Let me just do my real talk and just be about my business. Like, for real. I just, I got in that mood where I just took the backdrop down because I don't really like to use the backdrop for real talk. Like, it's real talk. We just going to be real. We just going to view it as it is the room. You know what I'm saying? It's not a tutorial. It's real talk. So let's just be real. Yeah, my room is not a mess. Um, the bed is made, but I just feel like it's real with being ourselves. Even though I'm being myself on a wig tutorial, you know what I'm saying? I can't use like a bunch of potty mouth words. I mean, I could if I wanted to, but I prefer not to because it's a review, it's a tutorial. So I'm not really trying to sit on there and just cuss everybody out. But, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I like to have like a backdrop, a little bit more professional background, you know, more a little bit clean, you know, something like that, opposed to just like my room. I do like my room too to be in the backdrop or the background. And so it all depends on the mood that I'm in, actually, to be honest with you. It all depends. And I'll probably go back and forth, you know, I'll use my room or then I won't use my room. I'll just probably like go back and forth. But anyway, so it just kind of like funked me down, like the whole wig shit just kind of like just took my whole vibe away and I was just kind of like disgusted by it. So I kind of like yanked it off. Then I didn't really yank it off, but I just took it off nicely because I, listen, I'm not really trying to lose the little bit of edges that I do have. Okay. And also for me to do like a synthetic lace front, sometimes it's a little bit harder, more challenging for me to do sometimes because depending on where the part is at and it was on the right side and this is my bad side like this is my thin side so it's like complicated like seriously it's so complicated for me to do like a part on that side when it comes to like a synthetic wig so that's the one thing I, you know I have to doctor it up I have to just do too much and I'm not really into all of that so yeah so anyway other than that the week has been great prosperous prosperous meaning you know like happiness i gained some happiness a little bit extra happiness you know i'm gained some more money too but you know it's been a good week for me um i have um 
I did bring the girls on Saturday to get their new glasses. So they got matching glasses. They like the same style. I got some polo glasses. And I cannot wait to see them on them like 24-7 because they look so cute in them. And I did vlog it, so I'll definitely be posting that video. Um, and that's about it. Like, there's really nothing new to talk about. I'm going to Sam's Club after this because I need to get some smoked salmon for my salads. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, listen. Let me tell y'all. Y'all know that I have been trying to lose weight for, like, the past year now. It's been a year, okay, since I have been going to the weight doctor. And I have lost a nice, decent amount of weight. But I always bitch to y'all and I always complain to y'all, like, why do I stay at 191 or 192? I stay in that like threshold. Now don't get me wrong, I'm happy about that size because it beats being 223, which I was. You know what I'm saying? Like I go back and I look at my old videos and I'd be like, dang girl, you was kind of bigger then. Let me tell y'all, it's so hard to eat so healthy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like not it's not really hard, but if you do it on a constant basis, you do get used to it. But you know, I did slack off for a minute and I got kind of tired of eating the salads. Like, let's be honest. I got tired of eating the salads all the time. And even though I did enjoy them at the time, after like um like five, six months, it was like seven, eight months, I'm like, I want something different. So I was at Sam's Club the other day and they had this huge container of smoked salmon you could and it was, you know, cut up and stuff broken up. And it was only like eleven ninety eight. It tastes so good in a salad, like, oh my God. So I have been into that. Now I need me a new, a new container because I ate that up last night. Like seriously, um, yes, I love Sam's Club for real. So that's all I'm about to do after this video. Um, I did go to the dentist last week and I got a new tooth. Um, yeah, I got a new tooth and it's in the back. Um, and, you know, it's a crown. Let me tell y'all, first of all, when I went to the dentist, the young lady who put the crown on me, the temporary crown, which was supposed to hold me over for two weeks, she cemented the shit out of that because it was not moving. Normally when I have like um, a temporary, it'll come off like back here. It came off and I just went without it. Um, the two front teeth, those, one of those broke and came out. So, you know, um, it all depends, I think, on who does it and how they cement it. So. I was getting the my permanent crown, my porcelain permanent crown, but also I was getting another temporary on the lower molar because I was, you know, I was getting a new tooth there too. So, if, you know, at first they numbed me, okay? They numbed me down here because this is where they was going to do a deep filling and then cover it up with a temporary crown until my, par my porcelain one came in for that one. So whatever, you know what I'm saying? Um, they didn't numb me on the top because the dentist was like, well, normally when people take off the, um, some people, when they get the temporary removed, it doesn't bother them. Let's just, let's see. First of all, my teeth are oversensitive. I don't, I cannot drink anything cold. So I have to drink that out of straw. And sometimes if it's too hot, it bothers my teeth too. Even teeth that I've had root canals in, I don't know what the issue is, but it bothers my mouth. So he was like, he was like, if it bothers you, just raise your left hand. You know what I'm saying? Raise your left hand. So the young lady, the hygienist, she went to take it, remove it with the tool. Um, I was like, uh, no, please don't do that. I didn't even raise my hand. I just was like, please don't do that was killing me. I, it gave me like this instant headache and throbbing pain. So then they numb me. Let me tell y'all. So then, so now I'm numb. My whole mouth is numb. So she comes back in and I don't know if it's pliers or whatever. I know it's not pliers that you, you know, I'm saying you use as a tool, but it's some type of dental pliers where it could break the permanent, the temporary one out. Did this girl, so she takes it out and, you know, I could feel like a little bit of pressure. And then next thing you know, I see her with, you know, like a napkin and tissue or whatever. She's dabbing. I don't even know where she's really dabbing like that, but I know she's in my mouth. And I, I don't know if it's part of the procedure or what have you. But so I'm like just sitting there letting her dab away because, you know, she's the one that's taking care of me at the moment. She's like, oh, my God, your lip, your lip. And I was like, what about my lip? Because, you know, remember, I'm numb. And I was like, what about my lip? She And she just kept dabbing. I was like, what's wrong? What's wrong with my lip? You know what I'm saying? She was like, it's bleeding. It's bleeding. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, why is it bleeding? What happened? So she said the, the tool 
pinched my lip and she did at the same time. And I said, okay. She said, but it's more bleeding on the inside. So I'm like, give me the mirror. So she gives me the mirror and I have like this huge um, gash. Now it's not that bad. It's like a small gash in the inside, but I got like this bruised black and blue chunk on my lip like it looked like somebody had punched me in my lip like seriously or you, it just looked like I had got attacked basically and I was like oh okay I was like it ain't that bad I said it'll go away it's just the blood clot it'll go away she was like oh my god I'm so sorry I'm so sorry I was like girl it's all right I know I have thin lips and we you could have just told me that I had thin lips. If you wanted to give me a lip filler, you could have at least did both sides. You know, this is what I'm telling her because she's feeling kind of nervous already. And, you know, and I'm like, it's okay. It's all right. And she's a nice young lady, black girl, you know, she's, um, she know me. Um, and I, you know, she's, she's come, I've come to her and stuff several times and she's worked on my teeth with the, with the dentist. And she also follows me on YouTube. So, you know, um, I didn't want her to feel bad about it because, it, it was going to heal and she just kept apologizing. I'm just like, it's okay. It's all right. You know what I mean? No big deal. I got my lip is kind of plump on this side. If you want to hook me up on that side, you know, you could do so. She was like, you're so funny. Thank you. I'm so sorry. You know, and I felt bad because listen, I'm not trying to get you fired. If I would have just been taking care of my teeth, like I should have, then you wouldn't fucking pinch me the two and I wouldn't have had a bust lip or a bruised lip or whatever. It was just so crazy. And then when I went all the way back home, 30 minute drive to my dentist's office, and I go and I give them my prescriptions like for ibuprofen, anti um, antibiotics, and um, hydrocortisone. I give her that. She's like, well, has Randy ever been here before? I'm like, what? And the pharmacist is like, has Randy ever um, picked up prescriptions? I'm like, who's Randy? Like, why the fuck is you asking who's Randy? I don't know Randy. I don't know, has he? She was like, well, because you have this. I said, what? Let me tell y'all, they gave me somebody else's prescription. I was so pissed because the office was closed. It was on a Friday, and a bitch had no medication but ibuprofen. I was dying. So you fucked up my lip, and you gave me the wrong medication. And you can't even call it in because it's like a narcotic. So I couldn't even get it called in. I had to drive back there on Monday to pick this prescription up because my teeth are still hurting from just being um, bothered, like, you know what I'm saying? Crown put on and then filling. So my teeth are still bothered. And plus my jaw is hurting from them just being in my mouth. But it was a crazy week. So that's what I did. And I did go to Bath and Body Works yesterday because they had 1095 three wick candles. So you get a three wick candle, you know, the $24 ones. They were $10.95 for one day only. Girl, hunty, I hurried up and got me some candles. And the bitch feel like going over there today. You know how they be lying and it's like, it's one day only. And then you go back the next day and you're like, I thought it was just one day only. Oh, well, we decided to extend it. Right. So anyway, let's just get into this real talk because I don't really want to talk you guys' ears off for too long. If you have a real talk that you would like to email me, you can go ahead and send it to my phone. It's mylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line, real talk. And if you want to change the names of the people that you're referring to, talking about, spilling the tea about in the video, you can always say that you've changed the name because if you don't, I'm most likely 99.9% .9 going to change the name. All right, baby fatties? Yes, like Maury says, you are 99.9% .9 the father. Yes, so let's get into this. Huh? 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 What? What? Yeah. All right, guys, hopefully my memory card don't get full, but I have another one on standby. Good morning, Miss April. I love your real talks and how you tell it like it is. I need some advice on whether or not I should marry my longtime boyfriend. You can call me Kristen. I met Lee while I was still married, and we would text and call each other while we were both married. Long story short, we ended up divorcing our spouses, and we dated. We had such an up and down relationship, we even broke up for a good five years. But during our rocky relationship, we had twin boys who are 10 years old now. After that three month breakup five years ago, we got back together. And this time I laid down some rules about 
um, his drinking and how he treated my son from my previous marriage. I told Lee not to drink anymore on weekend mornings. He used to wake up, drink, and start running his mouth and pass out in the afternoons. He didn't talk to my son right. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. He didn't talk to my son right all the time, and it bugged the shit out of me. But I, I confronted Lee about it while he was drinking, and we ended up arguing. So then I kicked him out of my house. That was our real breakup. So fast forward to about four years ago. We have been treating. We have been trying to treat each other better. Be patient with each other. Accept our boys from previous marriages. Show more love for one another. We decided that 2018, we finally want to get married. We set the date, looked at various parks. I talked to my parents, told our sons. My parents weren't happy, but I'm trying to figure out if this is because I'm their only daughter, they have a hard time letting me go, or if they really don't think will last. My mom said she didn't trust Lee, but when I asked her why, she never had an answer. Ever since then, back in July, I've had second thoughts. I've questioned Lee why it took so long to go to the store or anywhere for that matter. I asked who he te I've asked who texted him if it was at night, then we'd end up arguing about that. Seems that's all we've been doing is arguing now over stupid small shit. We set a date in September, but we don't have any rings. Every time we would look, Lee would be buzzed and be obnoxious and embarrassing. I asked him point blank if he truly wants to marry me, and he said, yes, of course. Then I said I felt he was trying to get out of it by not wanting to help me choose a place, being annoying, and also being annoying when we would look at rings. And he doesn't even want to take pictures. He said he just wants us to get married. But all this argument has got me confused. We've already been through shit. Why can't we just be happy again? Even though I'm confused, I know he's the one man that I want to be with for the rest of my life, even though he sometimes pisses me the fuck off. We have problems. He gets on my nerves. He drinks, but he is also a good man. I'm just not the type to keep quiet if I don't like what he's doing. We are 40-something now, and I keep thinking of the song by Jagged Edge when I think about Lee and I. We ain't getting no younger. We might as well get married. Let's just do it. You know the song. Let's get married. I, I know I'm not part of Jagged Edge's group, but I'm just talking. Okay? We are happy together as a big family. I just don't know why things turned to shit within the past month. And with all the arguing, I haven't booked a date in September with the preacher. I've been stalling. I'm hoping that you can shed some light when you talk about your ex-husband, current man. I can totally relate. They become different when they drink. Before, it made me mad when he came, when he became buzzed and grumpy. Now it makes me sad. I just keep praying that the man upstairs will make Lee sick of beer somehow some way or just plain make him quit but i guess i don't pray hard enough i'm not saying he's a raging alcoholic he works hard he has some beers after work and sometimes he has a happy buzz other times he says mean shit when he's under the influence then we get into it because like she said she's not taking shit so yeah i don't know sorry this is long just needed some help Kristen. so basically Kristen and lee have been together for ump amount of years you know what i'm saying they both got kids. I don't remember if she had kids with him. She doesn't have any kids with him. But basically, you know, they finally set a date to get married, which was this September. Um, but the issue is not only does he drink, but they are good about small shit. Where has he been? What's taking him so long to be gone? He's went to the store. Who's texting him late at night? You know, he don't really want to answer the question because had he wanted to answer, they wouldn't have gotten into an argument. You know what I'm saying? It's just little shit like that. She don't like the way he be talking to her son. You know, she feels like he don't talk to her son right. Her mother does not approve of her getting married. She just didn't have anything to say. You know, when her and Lee are out in public, he's making obnoxious remarks, or just being embarrassing when they're going to, like, the venues to look for, like, where to have the, the wedding or the reception, as well as when you're going to look for the rings. He basically just wants to get married. He don't want nobody invited. He just wants to just go and get it over with, okay? You know what I'm saying? But here's the main thing. They've been arguing back and forth. They, they've been broken up. They've been arguing. They've been broken up. They've been arguing, you know what I'm saying? Let me tell you something. First of all, when you got somebody that get up early in the fucking morning, I don't care if it's your day off, but if you get up early in the fucking morning to have a drink and then you shit face by the afternoon, then you have a motherfucking problem. 
I get it. People do work hard. Yes, everybody works hard. Not everybody, but you know what I'm saying? The majority of us do work hard. I don't feel like that's an excuse for somebody to get shit faced, drunk because they work hard. Like, come on now. So you got your you you off for the day on Saturday. You get up early in the morning and the first thing you do is start drinking. You don't want to go cut the lawn. You don't want to go clean the house, do the laundry, make breakfast for your family, whatever. You just want to go get grab a beer or whatever you want to drink and just get shit faced by the afternoon. Talk shit, get shit faced, talk shit. Irritate the people in your household and then fucking go and pass the fuck out somewhere in the early afternoon. Who the fuck does that but somebody that's immature and has a motherfucking problem? Let me tell you something. Like she said, she used to get mad because he would be drinking and shit. Now she just gets sad and she feel like she don't pray hard enough because if she prayed hard enough, God would help her or God would make him slow down or God would just make him quit drinking. No, sweetheart, God don't have nothing to do with this. This has to do with Lee. This is on him. When he finally decides that he don't want to keep getting up early in the morning on the days off and getting drunk, then that's what's going to happen. Until then, ain't nobody going to stop him from drinking except for himself. It don't matter how much you bitch to him all day, every day, he's not going to stop until he's ready to stop mainly because he probably feels like he doesn't have a problem because for one he works hard so he feels like if he comes home from work he can have himself a beer or two or three or four or whatever the fuck else he's drinking for two you are giving him an excuse as to why he should be able to have a drink because he works hard. I wouldn't give a fuck if he was a slave back in the early, early days, okay? That don't mean you got to come home, drink, and get shit-faced and fuck with everybody in your household and start arguments and shit because that's some real bullshit. Let me tell you something. Being around a drunk is annoying as, fun, as fuck. Yeah, in the beginning, it gets you angry. It gets you... If, you know, in the beginning, I, I got mad. I got mad. And then I started getting angry because, you know, those are two different levels. And I'm talking about my ex-husband who is now, you know what I'm saying, we are back together. But in the beginning, it would piss me off and it would upset me. You know what I'm saying? Because it was like a constant thing. But then it started being a little bit too constant for me. And um, then I started getting angry, you know, like you're crashing my cars. You're starting shit like... When I say starting shit, like, please don't run off at the fucking pussy, like, the mouth, and start talking shit to me, acting like you motherfucking Hercules, when, nigga, you can get swiped sideways, and I will lay your ass the fuck out, because you running off at the mouth, and you intoxicated as fuck. What made you think you can handle me? You know what I'm saying? So these are the things that will irritate me. And then, like, I don't feel like I have to argue with you while you're drunk. Like, don't say no dumb shit out your mouth to me while you're drunk, because I know me as a person, I don't tolerate that shit. I have a very low tolerance for alcoholics and I think that I have put up with it long enough. You know what I'm saying? I have put up with it long enough. Not only does the alcoholic suffer, but your household suffers, your family suffers. What makes it all right for your kids and his son to see that he shit faced by the mid afternoon on a weekend when y'all could have went and did some family shit. He just drunk, smelling and reeking of alcohol. Like what a waste, a waste of a weekend, a waste of time. Okay. Not only that, but that shit gets old after a while, like, and real motherfucking corny. Like, can you find something else to do with your time besides getting shit faced and spending up money on booze and alcohol and beer? Like go find something to do, get a hobby. I'm saying go outside and cut the lawn. Let's do something family. But instead you get up early in the mornings on Saturdays and fucking drink. You'd be better off to sleeping into the mid-afternoons. You know what I'm saying? But how I dealt with it is I dealt with it long enough. And I put up with a lot of shit in my marriage because of my husband's drinking. Okay? And after a while, you leave from mad, angry, to disappointed. Okay? You go to disappointed. And at the same time, you are at the disappointed phase. You are also at the numb phase. Like, no matter what you do for me, man, I really can't fuck with you because this is just a temporary thing, a temporary thing that you're trying to fix it. Thanks for the apology of getting drunk and talking shit. Thanks for the gifts or the flowers. But this is all because of your freaking low self-esteem. You are not able to control yourself and your immaturity. This is where these gifts are coming from. Like, grow the fuck up. So I went from mad, angry to disappointed and numb. And once you more or less get disappointed, it's to the point where there's like really nothing 
left for you, but to either walk away or run the fuck away. Okay. And I did just that. I fucking left. Okay. And when you're numb, you have really no regards. You really have no feelings. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like there were times when my husband would need to go to his appointments and I wasn't even trying to bring him. Like, you know what I'm saying? We had two cars, but one of them, I think it wasn't working at the time. I can't really remember. But either way, I could care less if he walked all the way from our home to the hospital. And it wasn't like I didn't care, but it was like, why should I do something for you when you won't even do something for yourself and for me and for these kids? Like, you come up in here, you run your mouth because you're drinking, and then I got to knock you the fuck out. Like, come on, man. Like, that's not fair to me, and it's not fair to the kids. That's it's wrong. And when a person just constantly gets to um just constantly drinks and drinks and drinks and they don't see no problem with it, then it's some other fucking problem. I'm sorry, but God is not going to help your situation. Okay. And for those who are holy rollers and believe everything that's going to take place from the heavens above, you're wrong. Okay. Because God will not help you if you are not trying to help yourself. Okay. Straight up point blank period. If you ain't trying to help yourself, why do you think God should put all of his time and effort into you? You ain't you ain't going to do nothing but just sit back and keep drinking and drugging or whatever the fuck it is you're doing. So why should he help you? You're not even trying to help yourself. And I'm sorry, like I like to help people. It's not like I go around looking to help people, but you know what I'm saying? If you need help with something, then I'm there for you. And it's called family. You stick together, you work it out, you're a family. However, there are some limitations. And then there's there's a fine line after a while. After a while, like, yeah, that's my husband. And he was a drunk or he was an alcoholic. And I did try to help him. And I did try to help him. And I did try to help him. And I did try to help him over and over and over and over again. But if you ain't trying to help yourself, nigga, what makes you think that I'm going to keep trying to help you? I'm tired. I'm worn the fuck out. You done wore me the fuck out with all of the foolishness that you have put me through and this family through. Like, I'm over it now. You know what I'm saying? I'm over it. I have helped and tried and tried and tried and tried and tried. And once you stop trying so hard, that's that's the numb part. That's like, you know what? Hands down, hands up, raise the little white flag, nigga. You got it. You got it. And when I say raise the little flag, you got it. That means, you know what? You got this. I'm out. I'm done. I'm leaving. And that's exactly what I did. I, I waved the white flag and I left because I could have kept on trying and I could have kept on staying there and trying to help him. But it makes no sense because if I did, what are you going to do? You going to like stop drinking temporarily? Like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I have already been through enough with you, so I don't really know what this round is going to bring. Like, oh, you're going to just stop altogether and just stop? I doubt that because if you don't even want to go to a program and you don't even want to open up and admit that you're um, seeking some type of help, then you're never going to get fucking help. It's not going to work out for you, point blank, period, like seriously, you know? And so that is the reason why I left. I got so tired. And I got so numb and fed the fuck up and angry and not even, I wasn't even angry anymore. I was just like over it and done. Like, you know something, I got other things to do. I'm not about to sit out here in this boring ass town, upstate New York, where I could just go back home to New York City or I could just move across the country like I wanted to do in the first fucking place. I'm not going to sit here and waste my motherfucking years and time trying to get this nigga to stop drinking and also be somewhere where there's nothing, no kind of, you know what I'm saying, no no type of family stuff, no, 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 there was nothing in Schenectady, New York, like, literally, there's nothing, that's like a poor fucking town, it's right next to all of New York, there was no way for anybody to, you know, like, succeed in that town, I mean, you probably could, but it, there was barely any jobs, you know what I'm saying, it was run down, it still is run down, okay, and, you know, I'm not trying to kick the town down because I live over here, but when you do leave and move from somewhere to somewhere else, you do see the difference, and I just was, I had had enough, I was over it, I was over it, and I said, you know something, I'm gonna move across the country, I'm gonna get the fuck away from him, and I'm going to start my life over, and I'm going to make me happy, I'm going to make April happy, I'm going to make my children happy, and that's what I did, I packed up my car, 
I packed, uh, well, I didn't pack the moving truck up, but the moving company did. And I drove away, like, you know, not instantly, but it started back in like February is when I was done. And I left in July, you know, he went back to jail because of his drinking and I was just done. And I drove out of the town of Schenectady with no problem. I didn't even look back, you know what I'm saying? And at first, when I got here, it was hard. I missed him and stuff, but I did not miss the drinking and the arguing. Let me tell you something. That shit ain't going to get no better. It's not going to get better until he can finally admit to himself that he is an alcoholic. And you know something? Sometimes they do admit that and they go to counseling and they go to groups, but then they end up back off the wagon or back on the wagon, whatever you want to call it. And then they got to start the whole process all over again. I don't really know anybody who has been to AA meetings and has succeeded with the very first time. So, you know what I'm saying? I can't tell you. I know that it does take several attempts. My mom's brother, he is a he is an avid alcoholic ever since the age of like 16, 15. And my mom is 64, so he's like damn near 70. And he lives in a fucking one bedroom apartment. Like he rents a room and he doesn't even have his stability. He can't even take care of himself properly. He's always calling my mom. Can you can you loan you something? You didn't even care for my mom when she was just, when she was young, like you know, as kids growing up. And why should she do anything for you now? You've been a crackhead. You know what I'm saying? He was a serious drug addict. And he was a horrible alcoholic. And he still is an alcoholic. I never forget my mom told me this story. And I used to go over to my cousin's house, which was kids that my mom's brother had with his wife, Anne. And I would go over to my uncle, my uncle um, Sam's house. His name is Samuel, but we called him Randy. But anyway, we'd go over to his house. I would go over to his house, you know. I was the only child at the time, and he had a daughter with his wife, and we were a few years apart. I was, I'm oldest, and then he had another daughter later on down the line with her. All I know is um, I would go over there, and sometimes he would get drunk, and, you know, I felt really uncomfortable because he would take, like, the little toys, like the little dolls or the stuffed animals, and make them talk to me, and I thought it was kind of weird because you're a grown-ass man. You're a man. And you're doing things like this. And I just would just stay away from him. And I really didn't care for him. And I don't like him at all to this day. I just don't like him. He's an alcoholic. I don't like the way he treated my mom as kids as they were growing up. And he's just an asshole. You know what I'm saying? He feels like the world owes him something. When you're just a fucking bum. Nobody owes you shit. But I never forget my mom told me the story. He was so drunk one night. He got up to use the bathroom. And I guess he took a wrong turn. And ended up pissing in the baby's crib. And the baby was in the crib. My Aunt Ann had went through so much because of my uncle. And it's so bad because once they finally were, when she was finally done and through with him, you know, we shunned him. We shunned him. He wasn't allowed around. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we took her in as family. And she was a smart woman. She was a nurse. She took care of her children with him. But it was just so sad that somebody like him, to just ruin another person's temporary life. Because when I say temporary, meaning don't let that shit fucking ruin your, your entire life by staying with the person for too long. Because if you do that, then, honey, you need some evaluation too. Let me tell you something. He ain't about to get no better. You could pray all night long if you want to, sweetheart. You could pray to the gods. You could pray to Zeus, Zach, whoever the fuck you want to pray to. But he is not going to change. He's not going to stop until he decides to. And as far as you guys getting married, sweetheart, y'all argue y'all argue way too much, okay? I understand that you have feelings for him and you love him and you adore him. and All of this good stuff. But yet at the same time, you done wrote too many gripes and complaints and shit in this email that it's like, bitch, why are you asking me should you marry him? No, you should not. You don't know who he'd be talking to or texting late at night. Every time you mention it, he catches an attitude. If it was nobody and it really, really wasn't nobody, then he wouldn't be so defensive about that shit. Hello? Okay? If he's supposed to just go to the store and get some, it should not take him hours to come the fuck back. Hello? Okay? If he's waking up early in the morning on the weekends and he's getting drunk and shit-faced by the afternoon and he likes to start arguments with you, hello, why the fuck would you want to marry him? 
if he don't even talk to your own child right, meaning your child from the previous marriage, you don't like the way he treats your son, why the fuck would you want to get married to the nigga? Like, seriously, he could be a hard worker all motherfucking day. I don't give a shit how hard the nigga works. Shit. You could build a skyscraper, lay down the motherfucking train tracks, and do all that good stuff. Nigga, you can have four jobs. I don't care. It doesn't mean that you have a, a, a pass, a drunk pass, to go ahead and get smashed face and talk shit to people. That's not a pass. Sweetheart, Crystal, what you need to do is make your list. Pros and cons about being with him. Pros and cons about why it would be nice to marry him. You need to make you a list. If you constantly complaining and you sad about his drinking and you sad about y'all arguing and you feel like y'all arguing over little shit, then bitch, you don't need to be married to this man. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. You would be married just to get divorced because an alcoholic is the worst thing in the world to deal with. That is like a disease and there's nothing that nobody can do about it except for the person who is the alcoholic? You know, I, I'm 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 happy with my life now, and I'm glad that I did move away from Schenectady, New York, all the way on the other side of the country. I'm I'm really am happy because, and I'm happy that I left my husband. I'm I'm happy, and I know you guys are like, girl, why would you say that y'all are together? I'm gonna tell you why I'm happy, because if I didn't leave him. And I would have just stayed there and just dealt with it and kept trying to help him. He would have never probably helped himself. And we probably would have been a lot worse off than we are now. We probably would have really, like, ended the relationship. And there would have been, okay, no as I was saying before, my memory card got full. Like I said, if I wouldn't have left, we would have, it would have probably ended up really bad. Um, meaning something may have happened because he just kept drinking. Um, I might have ended up in jail. He might have ended up in jail for a longer period of time. It, it, you know what I'm saying? And I just really feel like he might not have helped himself. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes when you have somebody lean on as a crutch, and you know that they're always going to be there for you and they're going to have your back, that is a crutch. You know what I'm saying? That just doesn't help the person at all. And so, you know, I'm, I am glad that I left him. Am I glad that I got divorced from him? Not really. You know what I'm saying? I should have just left and just left it at that and just just left him and not divorced him. But I just felt at the time like he's always going to be the same person that he's always going to be because I did speak to him constantly on the phone. I did speak to him. I was able to talk with him. So he did keep in communication. But a lot of the times when I would talk to him, he was still drinking and driving and drinking and driving. So that right there was like, you know what? He's never going to change. Just April, just go ahead and take care of your paperwork and get a divorce. And so that's what I did. And so, and a part of me regrets that and a part of me doesn't, but maybe that was just like a part that was able to enable him to really seek for help and stop drinking. You know what I'm saying? Maybe the divorce was like, well, he does say that a lot of times that, you know, that just opened his eyes and he realized that, you know, he ruined his family because of his drinking. When you have a man come to you and they clean and sober and they have they have gotten rid of their flaws and they have gotten help. And they can come to you and be a real man and tell you, like, yo, yo, I ruined my family. Like, we have, like, really educated conversations about his drinking and things, how it made him feel and how it's ruined things for him and how he's glad that he still has the opportunity with me. We have, like, these really heartfelt conversations. And I appreciate that a lot because I can tell just from the heartfelt conversations that he has matured a whole lot and he has become more of a man that he's supposed to he's able to control himself he doesn't drink at all which is great you know what i'm saying i'm glad that he doesn't i don't even like to have a drink in front of him like when we go out because i just feel like you know that enables him and it doesn't it doesn't even bother him but you know i did have a drink when we went to the comedy club and i felt kind of weird about it but you know if you are strong enough and you really want to do this then my little drink will not bother you but i try to just like not you know you know, not at all. And I don't really drink like that anymore anyway, so I'm good. It makes you gain weight. It really does. But, sweetheart, I'm going to tell you. Write that list of pros and cons, sweetheart, and see what you come the fuck up with. But I guarantee you, marriage is not going to be on your list of to-dos, okay? I would highly suggest not marrying him because he's very immature. And why put yourself through that shit? You already got enough bullshit going on. You already been put, been put through enough why put yourself through that? You like being punished? Like I'm saying, no, bitch, do not marry the nigga. Straight up. You can go ahead and give Kristen your advice down below. We're going to move on to the next real talk. So that way we could keep it popping. 
Um, and yeah, this one is very interesting. So, hello, Miss April. Remember me? I'm sending you this email because I found your email address on the back of a card I wrote it on. I don't remember you, but okay. The reason why I'm now using your email is to ask you for help with my real talk situation. I have a thing for styling and I have a thing for styling hair and finding different ways to actually mix and match hair designs that was found to more on the higher rankings. I did create a list of my own goals to help me follow down the path that will lead me to my opportunities. I am not being supported in my own decision to pursue styling hair professionally. I feel like my family are always questioning and second guessing my skills in this field of styling hair. This has been causing me to feel a little bit discouraged. So already the list of goals that I have is not working. I was able to register in a community college, which is something that I am very serious about and that I have been enjoying. I am in my seventh year of school too. However, I am discovering that YouTube is what my true passion might be because you are so oriented with the YouTube world that everything you do will always be heavily supported. I always push the young men and women there to do whatever their qualities and capabilities will embark upon the journey in doing at school. I do believe that my undying talent is what always stuck with me and that is what? I do believe that my undying talent is what always stuck with me and that is doing and that is doing and no one ever seemed to be interested in my talent not even my parents my only complaint with school is that i don't like school because i'm not thriving in hair skills that i value i'm not spending as much time in mastering the styling skill that school is a community college which is going to be more suitable for students who know how to put the education on autopilot and make the journey look pretty Basically, I wish that I would have researched the prices and cost of the materials for cosmetology classes. Recently, I started to find that random people, recently I started to find just random people to look for. I had even offered them so much comfort and peace and battered with them. Oh, excuse me. I have even offered these people comfort and peace and bartered with them to model my hairstyle in exchange for them getting their hair done. I never received any contact back from helping them get their hair done. I can do the job as best that I can, but if my client does feel like it is not pretty, then it is going to just be an all right type of job. Still, what do you think? Me not caring about the list of goals I created for myself? Do I give in to my laziness and hard self-sabotage? Will you help me please? Can we talk about this? I have been worrying about all of this so much. Even if this doesn't make real talk, can you please let me know what I should do in order to move on from feeling like this? God bless. Lynn. Okay, so first of all, basically Lynn seemed like she's stuck in a hard place between a rock and a hard place. She liked doing hair. She went to community college. She should have put money into cosmetology school. She barters with people to do um, their model, her, their, her hairstyles in return for, you know, just a free hairstyle. Her family don't really think that it's a good idea. She's made, her, she's made herself a list of goals. And basically, from what I take from it, you know, she feels like, you know, she wants to be on YouTube and shit. You know what I mean? Like, let me see. Let me, let me go back to this. Let me, let me go back to this real quick. Okay. Because I need y'all to understand. However, I am discovering that YouTube is what my true passion might be. Because you are so oriented with the YouTube world that everything that you do will always be heavily supported. Okay, so YouTube is your passion. Why is it your passion? Is it because you like to do videos? Have you done videos? Have you recorded videos? Yeah, I have, I, I am oriented with the YouTube world and people that watch me, but you have to realize I have been on YouTube since my daughter was one. She is 10 years old now. I mean, 11 years old now. So it's been 10 years. And it's not something that happens overnight. I have to work at this every single day and keep on building my channel every single day. And when I don't get views like that, then I get really pissed the fuck off. And I get kind of like sad and depressed about it because I know that me as a person, I have put in so much work and effort and time into doing these videos that it just bothers me when someone doesn't watch them like that. So YouTube may be your passion, sweetheart. But you have to look at it like this. When I started YouTube, it was kind of like brand new or whatever. 
Now it has evolved. Everybody and their grandmother and their dog and their pet hamster be trying on wigs and doing wig reviews. When I started, it was not a lot of us, okay? So it was a lot easier to get ahead and a lot easier to be noticed. Now you go on YouTube, you got to do things differently. You got to monetize. You got to protect. It's a whole lot different. And more people come on YouTube and the older people get pushed to the back because new people are discovered. So YouTube is not something that you want to make a career out of. Like, don't go saying this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a YouTuber for the rest of my life because you can't be a YouTuber for the rest of your life. I mean, you can if you want to. You can sit there until you're 90 and make videos. That doesn't necessarily mean that somebody's going to watch them. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get free products. Like some people look at YouTube and want to be um, a YouTuber for all the wrong fucking reasons. Like seriously, like for all the wrong reasons. They start looking at the money and the shit that you can get for free and shit like that. Let me tell y'all something. When we started out doing YouTube back in the days, it was none of that. Nobody wasn't getting no money. Okay. Nobody wasn't getting no fucking, we was getting free shit, but you know, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like that. It was a hobby. It was fun. I didn't have no friends and I still don't really have no friends except for you guys. So it was my way of being able to communicate with the world. You know what I'm saying? Who the fuck sits there in front of a camera and just talks to a camera? I mean, like, yeah, people do that on a normal basis, but you have to realize that this is my way of communicating with people. This is what I like to do. And yeah, I might have made a hobby into like a business or a lucrative business or just a career, but I'm not about to do YouTube for the rest of my life. Like I'm 44 years old. It's a passion to me only because of you guys. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I do have my downfalls where I don't want to be bothered with the shit, okay? Because I have a lot to do and being on YouTube doesn't make your life any easier. Don't feel like because you're doing YouTube that you ain't got shit to do. Because bitch, if you're trying to be on your grind and constantly getting paid, then bitch, you got a lot to do, okay? And that's how it is for a lot of us. But as far as your goals, sweetheart, okay, if that's what you want to be, you want to be a hairstylist, then why would you allow anybody to shut you down and kick you, kick dirt, kick motherfucking dirt on you wanting to be a hairstylist? If that's what you want to be, then be that shit. Don't let somebody else tell you, no, you shouldn't do that. No, you shouldn't be a lawyer. No, you shouldn't be a doctor. Man, no, you shouldn't be in my business. This, if you want to fucking flip burger patties at mcdonald's or burger king for the rest of your life and that's the career that you want then that's your career and that's what you want to do you can never let anybody stop you from making those decisions and your goals okay but here you are telling me like you know should i just give in to laziness and set and self-sabotage who the fuck says that now either you were already lazy and you're just making excuses or you really don't have no goals and you really don't want to do shit about yourself or with yourself. You just rather go on YouTube and think that you're going to be stardom from the, from the jump start. If your skills are not that great at doing hair, then what I would suggest is to keep at it. Keep continuing to do, um, try hair. The, Listen, let me tell y'all something. I'm not a hairdresser. I don't have no motherfucking certificates, awards, or license for doing nobody's motherfucking hair. I learned everything that I've learned on my own and some of it on YouTube. It's trial and error, okay? If you was to ask me to do you a weave, I would probably be looking at you like, no, bitch, I can't. I've never had a sew-in. I don't know how to do a sew-in. I know how to sew a motherfucking wig together, but no, I don't have the skills but I have learned the skills that I need to learn to make the things that I like to do, which is wear wigs and shit like that. And that's my skills. But I've learned these on my own and I was very, very hard willing to learn them. It wasn't like it was my main goal, but I was willing to learn them because I wanted to learn them. Now, when you have people trying to stir the pot and stir your goals the other direction, those are the type of people that you cannot always share your information with okay share your hopes and dreams and aspirations with something you just gotta leave and keep to your motherfucking self okay i mean yeah it's cool to involve involve your family in your dreams and the things that you're about to do however if you come into them with some foolishness and they already know what the fuck you like and how you always give up and you start one thing and don't finish it then uh yeah they're probably going to kick your hopes and dreams down the drain and be like girl please she didn't try to be a doctor last week or a veterinarian and she changed her mind about that let me tell you something Doing people's hair is no fun. 
okay and it is fun i me personally i can never work in a salon because i don't have the patience to deal with people and i don't have the patience to motherfucking stand on my feet all day and fucking dig in your head and try to do a style and hook you the fuck up but if that's what you want to do and if that's what your passion is then bitch go ahead and continue it don't let nobody stop you from being a hairdresser please people learn all types of things in all type of ways and you never know these people that are hairdressers they evolve on their own and they do new shit and they do old shit and they become shit okay but if they they get there they actually got there probably because some people like your family members are the ones that told them oh you can't do that oh you shouldn't do that no 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 don't do that it's not gonna work out for you those people that have been told like negative things about the goals that they choose always seem to achieve them because they trying to prove somebody wrong. That's just like with me. When I moved here, my mother told me not to move here. Why would you want to move across the country? My friend Angel, she said the same thing. And like a couple of other people. Like, And you know something? I was really going to go along with what they said and just be like, you know what? I don't even want to move. I'm going to just stay here in this tiny little house in this raggedy ass little fucking town. And I'm going to just, you know continue on with my happy ass life but then i said girl no look you already bought the plane ticket you went there and visited why the fuck are you gonna stop now if you don't like a bitch then you can come the fuck back or you can move somewhere else but don't let nobody else fucking judgment and how they feel stop you from doing what the fuck you need to do if i would allow them to stop me from doing what the fuck i needed to do then i wouldn't have been able to prosper in life i wouldn't have been able to get ahead i wouldn't be able to be as happy and i probably wouldn't even have a relationship with my husband so let me tell you something if it's really that important to you okay lynn and this is what you fucking want then by all means chase your dreams but given to laziness and and self-sabotage let me tell you something about laziness laziness is not motherfucking cool i cannot stand lazy people that don't do shit all day long and just hang around and lay up that's laziness okay self-sabotage why the fuck would you want to sabotage yourself let me tell you, I will go to sleep at like 3, 4 in the morning and get back up at 6.55 to get my kids ready and bring them to school and get like two, three hours of sleep and be fine with that because I got three hours last night and I got three hours the day before that. And I'm wide the fuck awoke. I get up. Yeah, my eyes might be hurting a little bit and I'm a little bit tired, but I get up and I do what the fuck I need to do. Okay, that's what motivation is called. I got up. I took them to school, came back, got mumsy, took her to school, got came back home. You know what I'm saying? Got my breakfast ready, which was two big, nice peaches, juicy ass peaches. And then I got my little workout on. Yeah, my workout might have been only 15, 20 minutes, but it was my workout and I was working on my booty. So I made sure I did that. I came upstairs. I ran my shower. I, I took a shower. I lotioned up. I spoke to my husband on the phone. I did my makeup. I did a wig review. And here I am doing real talk. It's about motivation. <clears throat> A lot of people say, isn't it hard? Oh, it's so easy to, to work from home. You're so lucky. Bitch, what makes you think that it's easy? I don't go to sleep till 3 in the morning because I'm busy working on something. And for two, it's all about motivation. You have to have self-will and self-power and be able to get up and do what you need to do. A lot of people don't have that, okay? And I know this much. I'm not trying to be kicked the fuck out. And I'm not trying to be without no motherfucking lights or nothing. So a bitch do make sure that, you know what I'm saying, she takes care of her shit. So, with that being said, sweetheart, I would highly suggest that if it's something that you want to do and you really, really like to do hair, then I would definitely go ahead and I will continue on with that. I would also continue to try and learn more styles because if people don't like your styles, that means you might be doing something wrong. I will continue to learn. I will continue to watch tutorials and reviews and such different skills on YouTube because YouTube is an educational place, but you can learn every and anything up on that motherfucker, okay? Um, also, um, your passion is to be on YouTube. And just because you see me being able to talk with people and they support, support me and respect me, that don't mean that you're going to get that same shit. Like, 
you might not even be discovered like that. You might be just one of the people that get like 100 views. We've been doing this for years. There have been people that I know that have been doing videos for like the same amount of time as I do. And they've never got anywhere near like 1,000 views per video or anything. So I, it's it all depends on you as the person, your personality, and a whole lot of other shit. That's why people will watch you. You know what I'm saying? If they don't like you, they don't like you. And if they feel like your shit is ugly or whack, they're not going to watch you. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to watch you. I don't think like you should buck on or, you know what I'm saying, bank on. I don't really think you should bank on YouTube as a career because it's a job, but it's not a job for everybody. I really feel like you should have a more lucrative, successful job. Me, I have my own other things going on besides YouTube. So this ain't just, my income don't just come from YouTube. But, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't a career move for me. I would have never thought as, oh, you know what? I'm going to get a job as a YouTuber. Like, I would have never thought about no dumb shit like that. Like, you know, I'm going to go make me a video because I like to do videos and I like to be able to communicate with everybody else in the world. This is the reason why I started doing YouTube. Nothing more, nothing less, but because of those reasons. So, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this real talk. You know what I'm saying? I hope it meant something to you guys and and such. You know, leave your comments below. I'm starving right now. I have an hour before I go get mumsy, so I'm really trying to think about what I want to eat. I'm probably going to go downstairs and eat those Uncrustables. You know those little sandwiches, the Uncrustables, they're round. You get them. They're already pre-made pre peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. They're round. I freaking love those, okay? I freaking love them. They're really, really good. Um, but I don't know if I should eat them because they're mine. But, you know, I mean, it wouldn't be too bad. But I'm really hungry. And, yeah, I'm going to go get something to eat. So, you guys, I love you. Stay deep and deep delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, and thumbs this video up, baby zaddies. Yes. Thumbs the video up, baby zaddies. I love you. And you can always send me an email. And you know what? Have a great evening or morning or afternoon whenever you're watching this video, hunties. But I will see you soon. Uh, 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 uh.